It is true without lie. It is certain in the truest. That which is below is equal to that which is above. And what is above is equal to what is below. To realize the miracle of a unique thing. As all things are created by the One and His plan, so are all things originating from the One by adaptation. Its father is the sun, its mother is the moon. The wind was born in its belly, its nurturer is the earth. It is the father of all perfection, of all the world, and all its virtue is perfect. When it is changed into earth, all its power is gathered together. Separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the dense, step by step and with great understanding. It rises to heaven from the earth and down again to the earth and thereby receives the power of the upper and the lower. Thus you gain the glory of all the world Above, all ignorance will leave you. The unique is of all the strengths, the strongest strength. It defeats all subtle things and permeates all solids. In this way, the cosmic was created. This is from whence stem all the magnificent emulations, the way of which is described herein. This is why I am called the Thrice Great Hermes, because I possess the three parts of the wisdom of all the world. What I have said of the workings of the sun is complete and perfect. Though the Rosicrucians used the symbolic language of the alchemists, they did so not seeking to turn base metals into gold, rather, they sought to broaden the human consciousness to responsibly participate in the evolution of culture. It is striking how the different symbolic images of the alchemists, from the metamorphosis of the elements to the imaginative experience contained therein, relate to the evolution of consciousness and that of the earth. It seems, therefore, that the alchemists supply the law-governed process of the evolution of the inner soul to the outer world of the elements in accordance with the statement of the tabula. That which is below is equal to that which is above. And what is above is equal to what is below. To realize the miracle of a unique thing. On the left sun side, the qualities of Saturn and Mars. On the right moon side, the Venus and Jupiter qualities are concentrated. On the left side, Saturn, because of constriction, and Mars, because of the ego, stand for the heightened experience and understanding of the world through the intellect. In alchemical symbolism, this state of the soul is expressed as a dragon. On the right side, Jupiter and Venus, because of the absence of the consciously structuring qualities of Mars and Saturn, stand for the lack of structure and the one-sided devotion, Jupiter, and emotions, Venus, that arise from this side. Symbolically, this evokes the image of the snake. Therefore, these opposites, one the masculine and the other, feminine, face each other in their one-sidedness as dragon and snake. The artisan must strive for the harmonization of the polar principles of this nature. Dragon and snake stand for the two polar principles of our consciousness, emotions that emerge from unclear thoughts and thoughts that emerge from emotions create a constantly self-consuming and out-of-itself newly born reality of unreality, which determine life in its progression. 
The background of this image is sparse, but the unfolding flower points at further evolving possibilities outside the circle-bound movement. In its purity, the flower symbolizes an inner attitude in which the one-sided aspects are not denied, but, through the respective inclusion of the opposite poles, are harmonized. The power that binds the ego increasingly to the head and thus permits the experience of the world mainly through the intellect can therefore be transmuted into a positive quality of conscious concentration. The power of this lack of structure, which leaves the soul to the emotions without limitation, we may therefore turn into conscious, loving devotion. While the soul qualities of conscious concentration and devotion complement each other in the main, the soul mood of the holy sobriety, the reason of the middle, emerges in turn. This will be of important significance on the further path of spirituality. The sun and the moon situated over the planets represent in the emblem another plane of polarity, the purified aspect of the planets, which have changed into the mental ability of conscious attentiveness and the ability of the soul for loving devotion. Together, they build the condition to bring forth the new person who will lead us to the next step of the Rosicrucian teachings, the intuitive experience of the macrocosmic equivalent. The birth of the new person as the prerequisite for the intuitive experience of the equivalent of macro and microcosm. This corresponds to the following lines. Its father is the sun. Its mother is the moon. The wind was born in its belly. The artisan through the harmonization of the polarities overcomes his common point of reference in the head, whereby he descends into the belly cavity and, in the darkness and through experience, ascends as a new person and a child of Sophia, the begotten of wisdom. In the emblem of the Emerald Tablet, this process of rebirth is represented through the flowing together of the purified qualities of mind and soul, and thus bear the new person, Mercury, Hermes, showing that the planet sign Mercury is the only symbol that unites the qualities of the other planets that are expressed in the symbolic elements of bowl, circle, and cross. Thereby, Hermes harmonizes the polarity of male and female and becomes the androgynous messenger of heaven, who acts on the vertical plane of up and down of heaven and earth as the mediator. This picture symbolizes the next phase of the awakening process, the ascension into heaven. A blue eagle carries aloft the purified naked being the synthesis of sun and moon. The male and female polarities are united by the overcoming of the restless thoughts, hair or day, on the one hand, and the purified emotions, bat or night, on the other. However, the heads of the man and woman still show a duality, which points to the still existing, yet now no longer exclusive, but complementing polarity of the newly reached plane of consciousness beyond the sensual. This symbol of the purified self, the new being, is where the eagle carries it. It blooms into a blue flower, becomes space, and thus experiences the macrocosmic equivalence. For Rosicrucians, this is the sphere of the cosmic virgin Sophia. The primordial face of the soul shines in its purified, wisdom-filled state in the star-spangled pure blue. In the emblem of the Emerald Tablet, this state of consciousness, the intuitive experience of the equivalence of the micro and macrocosm, is represented by a circle in the center of the image. We now recognize that what is depicted in the upper half of the emblem of the Emerald Tablet is the personal, spiritual path of the evolution of humanity, from the harmonization of the polar life of the soul, through the birth of the new person, to the heavenly ascension, the intuitive experience of the sphere of Sophia. That which is below is equal to that which is above. 
and what is above is equal to what is below. The lower half of the emblem is marked by three shields which are connected to one another, as well as the middle ring by a golden chain. On the left side, the shield shows a double eagle coloured red on a white background on one side and coloured white on a red background on the other. On the right, we see a green line on a yellow background. Below in the image, the trinity is concluded with a seven-pointed star, which in its rays represents the seven planets. To the sides of the star are shown cosmos and earth. They signify that on this plane of evolution, cosmic as well as secular powers have to fertilize each other to further the evolution in time. In the picture of the earth, the land is shown brown and the oceans are shown blue. The cosmos symbolizes the blue level of consciousness of the Sophia, the fixed star contained in the sphere and the polar qualities of sun and moon. The meaning of the imperial orb, red with a yellow ring and topped with a yellow cross that sits on the seven-pointed star, will become apparent through the further contemplation of the three shields. The shield portraying a double eagle, coloured red on a white background on one side and white on a red background on the other, to understand the meaning, let us return to the image of the blue eagle that carries aloft the androgynous being, the reborn soul beyond the sensual polarity, and which stands symbolically for the purified soul and the self. It lifts it heavenward and into the sphere of the cosmic Sophia. As we understand from the representation of the androgynous being, the consciousness, though it is to be found beyond the sensual polarity, remains polar but corresponding to itself and not, as on the sensual plane, in a self-exclusive way. The qualities of male and female remain intact. The double eagle points to this remaining polarity in the sphere of Sophia. Although the consciousness, symbolized by the circle, is a self-contained unity, it shows itself in the passive female, moon, silver, devotion, and the male, active, aspect, Mars, red, self. Thus, the white eagle expresses the quality of the moon, and the red eagle that of the sun, in its self-quality on the level of Sophia. Their backgrounds represent the opposite colors, which points to the inseparable connection of the two qualities. One pole comes out of the other and in turn bears the first in its great revelation. The empty circle symbolizes the still undeveloped nature of consciousness, which in its emptiness is nonetheless directly creative and forth-bringing since the greatest emptiness by the spiritual principle as we have encountered with the double eagle simultaneously brings forth an opposite pole from itself. From a Rosicrucian standpoint, however, there is a danger in the state of consciousness that is symbolized by the double eagle. To understand this, let us once more return to the Ergon and Paragon of the Rosicrucians by Theophilus Schreichardt. The meaning of the title of the picture is the primary work, Ergon, and the secondary work, Paragon. As is apparent from the picture, the individual the inner development of humanity is understood by the Rosicrucians as the secondary work. Understood on a deeper level, the object is to master the starry sphere, to which has been attached the metal silver and the moon sphere. So, the minor work, or paragon, corresponds to the level of the intuitive experience of the Sophia. The Rosicrucian understands this level of consciousness to be the secondary work, since it only represents the precondition to behold this spiritual son, this spiritual being, the Christ, which to him is the actual source of his work. In the symbols of sun and moon, when they are shown together, we see the polarities of masculine and feminine. According to the understanding of the Rosicrucians, when the sun is depicted by itself in its spiritual aspect, it represents the Christ, which is expressed by this image, 
an image from the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians. From Jesse, the father of King David of Israel, grows the root of the family tree of Christ, the spiritual son. So we are led to a significant moment within the Rosicrucian initiation. Should students decide on the silver path, the one of the moon, they will, in the sphere of cosmic wisdom, take possession of such an all-inclusive place in this life that they will detach themselves from the evolution of the earth in time. If, on the other hand, they seek the powers of the sun with the ego, which seed-like are slumbering in the sphere of Sophia, in order to awaken them in this renewed direction towards earth in time, then they follow the golden path, the one of the Christ. Through the realization of the minor work, individuality is born in the experience of the sphere of Sophia. However, it only comes to unfoldment through the dedication to and cooperation with the evolution of the earth, the major work, which comes to expression in the following sentences of the Emerald Tablet. It rises to heaven from the earth, and down again to the earth, and thereby receives the power of the upper and the lower. Thus you gain the glory of all the world. Above, all ignorance will leave you. The unique is of all the strengths, the strongest strength. It defeats all subtle things and permeates all solids. The second shield, coming out of the circle, is a green line on a yellow background. It carries the quality of the sun in the seekers that they have internalized from the sphere of Sophia as a seed, which is the path, the truth, and the goal for them. This is expressed in the yellow background. As nature, through the effect of the sun, begins to become green again, so too, in the picture of the line, the newborn individuality seeks to internalize in its heart the sun quality, the Christ. The moon drifts on the mirror-smooth ocean. In realizing the sphere of Sophia, the consciousness, through the calming of the turbulent waves of the emotions and imaginations, is turned into a mirror, which permits it to view reality without distortion. The seven stars on its body indicate that together with the qualities of the seven planets in the flow of time, it goes the way of the sun by devouring it in the emblem. The shield of the double eagle and that of the green lion surround the lowest shield of the seven-pointed star in the emblem. Wisdom and the self-powers that slumber seed-like in this sphere now turn to the seven count of time when individuality recognizes wisdom not as an end in itself, but as a prerequisite. Out of this understanding, Rosicrucians attached a special meaning to the symbol of the seven-pointed star. Through this image, we can now understand in greater detail the different planes of inner evolution as they are shown in the seven-pointed star in the emblem of the Emerald Tablet. In the upper part of the triangle, we see the sun and the moon as the two aspects of the mirror-like consciousness of the Sophia as depicted by the wing. When those two qualities as they are represented in the shields of the green lion and the eagle, turn towards the lower point of the triangle, the body that is the earth, in the space of the evolution of the number seven, then the soul, starts on the way that is indicated by the seven points. The inscription around the emerald tablet has the same meaning as the one around the picture of the seven-pointed star. Vista interiora terrae rectificando, in vinius occultum lapidem, which means, search out the never part of the earth, perfect it, and you will find the hidden stone. This statement is called the vitriol formula, which to the alchemists meant the transformation of base matter into gold, and to the Rosicrucians, the transformation of earth into sun. When, in the sequence of numbers 1 to 7, 
we begin with Saturn and proceed clockwise to the Moon, the human soul is directed again on its way from Heaven to the Earth. The next plane of evolution opens up through the seven-pointed star when we follow the flow of time, signified by the rays of the star. Saturn Jupiter Mars Sun Venus Mercury Moon This new figure of a seven-pointed star corresponds to the sequence of the days of the week in the flow of time and, when we begin with Saturn, to the evolutionary development of the Earth through the different planetary states in time. Thus, through the symbol of the seven-pointed star, reference is made also to the cosmic development of the Earth and therefore the actual task of the Rosicrucian initiate. The turning of the individuality from the sphere of the Sophia to the Earth and to the flow of time and then further to the center of the Earth opens a new dimension of being which connects directly to the Christ and the evolution of the Earth. Before we turn to the last symbol in the emblem of the Emerald Tablet, the orb of empire above the seven-pointed star, we must deal with further inner planes of human evolution that are necessary to its realization and that lead from the cosmic through the human heart to the inner part of the earth. That which is below is equal to that which is above and what is above is equal to what is below. Attention should be given to an easily overlooked representation from the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians. It is called Three Natural Suns in the World. The representation names as follows. The Great Sun in the Sky. Father and Mother of all creatures. Then. The Small Sun within us. And the lowest sun inside the earth. From the viewpoint of the Rosicrucians, the Christ is revealed to humanity in this image of the three suns, in a threefold way where the Sophia consciousness is not understood as an end in itself, but as a gift to once again turn from the vastness of space to time. The same wisdom is expressed in the prologue to the Gospel of John, we will here present only the pertinent sentences. In the beginning, there was only the Word. Through it, all things became. In it, there was life, and life was the light of humanity. And the light shone in the darkness, but darkness did not accept it. The cosmic sun is the Christ in the first revelation as the original word, self. The second smaller sun is the Christ in the second revelation in humanity as the source of life itself, the intrinsic light that comes to us from the heart. The third lowest sun inside the earth we find once more depicted separately in the book of the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians. It is the imagination of the crucified Christ inside the earth who has taken upon himself anew the cross of the material. In the minor work, metals are turned into silver, that is, the body and soul is purified of subjectively. In the major work, a desire to redeem is achieved through this completed sacrificial action in the harmonization of the three sons. Through this, men and women work consciously with the Christ in the transformation of the earth to gold, to a new sun. However, this requires our exertion of free will to which the Christ, as represented in this image, holds forth his arms in an attitude of expectation, 
It is an invitation rather than a moral demand on us to cooperate in the completion of the great work. The second central sun in us we find represented in the symbolic language of the Rosicrucians by this image. And in Christian representations by this image. It shows Christ pointing to a burning heart on his chest that has a burning flame on top. On the one hand, the heart is the source of life, but it is also the gate through which the soul finds the Christ. Here we not only have suggestive imagery, but also realistic statements. This level of evolution is expressed in Rosicrucianism in the imaginary picture of the phoenix. When the green line devours the sun and turns into the red line, the rose that is in the center of the cross unfolds. The door of the heart opens up and the liberated soul soars as the firebird phoenix up to the Christ sun to embrace it longingly with its wings. The symbol of the rosy cross is derived from the inner experience it is meant to remind us that we carry in our hearts the way to the Christ, the actual source of Rosicrucian wisdom. Since this process of coming closer to the Christ, our true being, is an everlasting one, the sunbird phoenix has to repeat forever this transformation, the death and resurrection. Thus, we now have two levels of experience for rebirth of the soul. In the eagle, image of the purified soul, humanity enters through the first door to the intuitive experience of consciousness, the cosmic wisdom of the Sophia. In the imaginative image of the fire sunbird phoenix, we move through the second door of the heart and seek union with the macrocosmic equivalent of self with the Christ. The process described here we find depicted in this emblem the picture bears a Latin inscription of In hoc signo winces, which means, in this sign, you will be victorious. It shows a sun with five main flames and eight smaller ones in between. The five stands for humanity and for the rose, the eight for the exaltation of the four elements, the resurrection. Thus we have in the picture of the cosmic rose, the resurrection of humanity, Phoenix, and the endeavor to unite with the cosmic Christ, the archetype of the self. The unfolding of the cosmic rose begins a new plane of evolution of the soul, in which men and women find themselves at the beginning of an, as yet undreamt of, dimension of the active will. We sense the infinite expanse of a mystery, which would always be a living enigma to us. If we have in the realization of the cosmic Sophia experienced and recognized the eternal part of our soul, the consciousness then begins with the approach to the Christ. With the rising of the soul from the heart imagined by the sunbird phoenix to the Christ sun, the active co-responsibility towards the evolution of the earth. These are the events that happen within us, as within the earth. Thus, we will be able to understand the final symbol of the emblem of the tabula, the red imperial orb above the seven-pointed star. Through the power of the awakened self, it is the Christ-suffused earth that is turned into gold, a new sun, a cosmic heart in the evolution through the seven levels of the planetary evolution in time. This journey receives the blessing of the spiritual world by the two hands that reach out from the clouds.